Let's talk about this new hit movie, Godzilla Minus One. I recently picked up this SH Monster Arts Godzilla. I like it a lot, but for its price, I wish it had some accessories. Let's see what kind of merch they're selling over in Japan. I log on to buy.jp. You can see there are tabs here and you can shop around several stores or auction sites. This is always a good one to check. Look at this little guy, what's his story? I can use Baiyi's built-in translator to see that this is a Bon Presto enshrined beast figure. These are on eBay for around 50 bucks and up. But with Baiyi's built-in currency conversion, I see that in Japan they're closer to $30 US. Some soundtracks, some hoodies, but I'll never look as handsome as this guy. The Godzilla store is soft vinyl, but it's the metallic version. Check out these gold and silver anniversary coins. There's a lot of good stuff here, and it's usually less expensive than eBay. And if you're savvy, and you, you check Baiyi's awesome coupon section, you can save a lot of money with Baiyi, even accounting for shipping. I've got an exclusive link where you can sign up for Baiyi and get 2,000 yen free to do some shopping, so there's more savings right there, it's free money. The link is in the description, sign up, you're going to love Baiyi. It's, it's fun to just window shop. Look at this Godzilla headgear. You know what, I want it. I'm buying this right now. Sign up for buy.jp today. Psst. Psst. Over here. Orga's in the house. I just watched Godzilla Minus One, a 2023 Japanese Godzilla movie that's received near universal acclaim from critics and audiences alike. And that Godzilla scared the piss out of me. He was terrifying. I've never been so afraid of a Godzilla. Oh, here he comes. Hmm, not over here. Where did I put my car keys? Uh. Is he gone? Oh god, that was the scariest moment of my life! Everybody loves Godzilla Minus One, and everyone seems to emotionally gravitate toward different moments, different things resonated for different people. The film has a strong message about the value of life, but it's also critical of the Japanese government for devaluing human life. But it also had a respectable look at PTSD. But it also deals with how the definition of family can go beyond blood. And it also, it covers a lot! There's a lot! But it covers all of this very well and naturally. And you may find the film surprisingly wholesome. From the opening shots and scenes, the cinematography and direction were immediately grabbing me. The sets were great. The acting across the board is spectacular. I loved every character. This was the most invested in the characters I've been since the original Godzilla film in 1954. That only took 70 years. And Godzilla in this movie? gave me chills. I've never been afraid of Godzilla, not even Shin Godzilla, but this guy terrified me. The boat scene had me on the edge of the seat. The scene when he goes to the- Excuse me. Ah! Have you seen a set of car keys around here? Oh my god, don't kill me! Oh, he's gonna do it! He's gonna do it! He's gonna kill me! I know I left them in this general area. Can you give me a holler if you see them? See what? My keys! I get so mad when I can't find them! Uh oh Oh no, he's doing the thing! Ah, jeez, it was cool on screen, but in person, it's horrifying! Ugh, oh, sorry about that. I just get so mad, you know? I'm in a strange dimension. I can't find my keys. I don't own a car. You don't even own a car? Four and three quarters stars! Yeah, so about that last quarter. Ooh, you're about to go into something. Look, I love the movie, and I can make this entire video about me gushing. It is objectively a good movie. Not a good Godzilla movie. Godzilla Minus One is a good movie. I just didn't like the last four minutes, personally. During a city attack, a blast heads towards our protagonists, Koichi and Noriko. And she pushes him into an alley, and she gets blasted away. Koichi never got to express his love for Noriko before her sacrifice. So now he's got a death wish. Between this and his other PTSDs, he just wants to die. But his friends remind him about Akiko, the adorable little girl that he and Noriko were taking care of. And in a small twist, Koichi decides to live. And he defeats Godzilla without taking his own life, and it's the perfect moment. Mwah! But it follows up with Noriko somehow being alive. 
It's th this scene that felt so tacked on to me, and just unnecessary for the story being told. Koichi deciding to live, despite all he's been through, is a satisfying enough character arc for me. I clung to the father-daughter relationship in the movie. There's a part where little Akiko calls Koichi father, and he rejects that because he's afraid to love something, and he also feels undeserving of love. Am I undeserving of love? I would have been happy enough if the film ended with her calling him father, and him this time accepting it, and telling her he loves her. It felt like that's what the film was setting up. For me, him choosing life and choosing Akiko was enough. A complete journey. But then the film says, let's do the mega happy ending, and reveals Noriko is alive. But wait! It's not that she's alive, because it would appear she's suffering radiation poisoning. And if that's the rule of this universe, then it's highly likely that Koichi will also have radiation poisoning. They all will have it, and they all will die. That is not the happy ending many of you took it for. But then there's this black stuff on her neck that I swear when I saw it, it looked like it was moving like the Venom symbiote. So maybe she has some kind of mutation, or Godzilla virus, which will go either one of two ways. One, it's a concept we'll never see pay off, like the end of Shin Godzilla. Or two, it's setting up a sequel, which I also dislike, because the rest of the movie felt so above sequel baiting. And then it keeps going, because then we see the ocean and we see that parts of Godzilla are starting to regenerate. And I didn't like that either! For one, we've seen it already, but more important, it just didn't serve the story at all. In fact, I would argue it kind of undercut the story and the victories we've enjoyed with these protagonists we love. No matter how you interpret this ending, I don't see how Noriko surviving serves the story. I could see it allegorically about the lasting effects of the devastation of nuclear annihilation, but just narratively, I don't think it added anything to the story. And even if someone is somehow able to argue that it was justified and it did serve the story, then I would say it wasn't executed very well. And because the stuff I didn't like was at the very end, it was the taste that was in my mouth when I left the theater. But still, it was a really good movie. Maybe I shouldn't judge it by the last couple of minutes. Hmm. Gold Star! Tell me what you thought about the film and the ending in the comments below. Anyway, what an exciting time to be a Godzilla fan, am I right? You're a Godzilla fan, Orga? Dude, I'm fucking terrified of you. Yeah.